So, this is the second of the Theory of the Firm series in section 1.5 of the IB Economics High Level Only uh, uh, component of the syllabus. In this video, I will focus more on production. Just a quick recap, I said in the previous video that the firms take the four factors of production and they combine them to produce goods and services. And um, it might make sense to think that if I want to increase production as a producer, the solution is to add more factors of production. But we mentioned earlier that this is not always possible because increasing the factors of production might take time or it might cost money that the firm just can't afford at the moment or it might require an availability of the factors of production and these factors are just not available. And so this brings us to the distinction or the difference between the short run and the long run. In the short run, at least one factor of production is fixed. All production takes place in the short run. But in the long run, all factors of production are variable. We know that all planning takes place in the long run. Let's focus more on production in the short run. So let's take an example. Assume, for example, there's an owner, um, say, uh, we'll call him Mo. Mo owns a small burger shop. In that burger shop, he has one refrigerator, one grill, some countertops, and some implements for making burgers. These are Mo's fixed factors. Now, Mo's variable factors in this case are, or is, the number of workers. So, we know that in the short run, output can only be increased by applying more of the variable factors to the fixed factors. So really, all Mo can change at this point is to add more and more workers. So, if there is one, so obviously if there are zero workers, the total product or the total number of burgers that are sold will be zero. If there's one worker, so Mo is working by himself, he will make 20 burgers. If Mo hires someone to help him, two workers, they'll make 45, 3, 65, 4, 80, 5, 90, 6, 95, 7, 97, 8, 97. These numbers here in this column, total product, refers to the total output that a firm produces in a given time period using its fixed and variable factors. This is the total output that Mo's hamburger shop is making. Now, if we express that table that we just saw in the previous slide, if we put it in a diagrammatic form, this gives you what we call the total product curve, TP, the TP curve, total product. You can see that the total product is increasing, but it doesn't keep increasing forever. It starts to increase at a decreasing rate until it kind of levels um, and doesn't increase anymore. Maybe even if Mo continues to hire more workers, total product will decrease. This is generally what a total product curve looks like. It's a relationship between output, the total product on the y-axis, and the number of workers. As more and more workers are added, total product will increase, but it will not increase at a constant rate. Now remember, in your IB economics exam, you may be asked um, to calculate total product from a set of data or draw a total product curve. Once again, I'm just reaffirming because it's important. It is a relationship between the quantity of labor or the quantity of your variable factor or the number of workers in this example and total product is on the y-axis. So number of workers on the x-axis, total product on the y-axis. The key is to show that total product will increase. It might increase at an increasing rate at the beginning but then it starts to slow down and it's stops increasing, it levels up at a constant rate eventually. Now, from that set of data that we introduced earlier, which is the relationship between the number of workers and the total product, you may be asked to calculate average product. Average product is the output per unit of the variable factor on average. So basically, to calculate average product, all you have to do is divide total product by the number of units of the variable factor. Remember, TP here is the total output produced, 
that's TP, and V here refers to the number of units of the variable factor. In this example, it's the number of workers. So, if the total product is 20 and the number of workers is 1, 20 divided by 1 will give you an average product of 20. If the total product is 97 and the number of workers is 7, 97 divided by 7 will give you an average product of 13.9. You might also be asked to calculate the marginal product, which is the extra output produced by the extra unit of the variable factor added. To calculate marginal product, we use this equation. Change in total product divided by the change in the variable factor. So TP2 minus TP1 divided by V2 minus V1. Remember, TP2 minus TP1 refers to the change in the total output produced. V2 minus V1 refers to the change in the number of units of the variable factor employed. So, when I had three workers, my total product was 65. When I employed the fourth worker and I had four workers, my total product was 80. So you would get TP2 minus TP1, so 80 minus 65 is 15, divided by 4 minus 3 is 1. So 15 divided by 1 gives you a marginal product of 15. Let's take a look at another example. When I had 6 workers, my total product was 95. When I had 7 workers, my total product was 97. So 97 minus 95 is 2, divided by 7 minus 6, which is 1. So 2 divided by 1 gives you a marginal product of 2. It's very important to be able to calculate marginal product and average product from a set of data. And this is what average product and marginal product look like in a diagram. So average product is the curve that is drawn in blue. This is AP, average product. Marginal product is the curve that is drawn in green. This is MP, marginal product. As you can see, average product and marginal product will both increase for a while. But then after a while, as you add more workers, they will start to decrease. So it's not always a good thing in terms of productivity to add more workers because average product is basically the average number of hamburgers that each worker makes. Yes, it increases at the beginning, but as you add more workers, remember you're adding workers to a fixed number of factors of production, their productivity will start to fall after a while. The same with marginal product. Marginal product is the extra productivity of that last extra worker employed. Yes, it might rise for a while, but it won't rise forever. Eventually, it will fall. Why? Because I'm adding more and more workers to a fixed number of fixed factors. Now, once again, a quick recap. Remember, the marginal product and the average product curves. So this is the average product curve and this is the marginal product curve. They are a relationship between the quantity of the variable factor, in this case it's the number of workers on the x-axis, and the average product and marginal product in units on the y-axis. Now, looking at this diagram, we can see that whenever marginal product is higher than average product, the average product will rise. So, it makes sense. If each additional worker produces more than the previous worker, then when you average out the total product, you'll find that the average product has risen. Okay? As you can see in this section of the curves, up until the second worker, because the marginal product was higher, it pulled the average product up. It increases the average productivity. Now, if the marginal product is less than the average product, average product will fall. And this started to happen after employing the second worker. So every additional worker after the second worker had a lower marginal product than average product and therefore it pulled the average product down. So when marginal product equals average product, average product is maximized. And this happens where the two curves intersect at this point here. Where they intersect, this will be the maximum average product given your fixed factors of production. 
And this brings us to a very important hypothesis or a very important law when it comes to talking about production in the short run. And this is the law of diminishing returns. So what does the law of diminishing returns say? Basically, as extra units of a variable factor are added to a given quantity of fixed factors, the output from each additional unit of the variable factor, which is the marginal product, will eventually diminish. So it won't keep increasing forever. Eventually it will start decreasing. It can be looked at from an average product perspective as well. As extra units of a variable factor are added to a given quantity of fixed factors, the output per unit of the variable factor, that is to say average product, will eventually diminish. And this is the law of diminishing returns. So from the previous slide where we defined the law of diminishing returns, we can now see where it actually set in. Where did diminishing returns set in? Well, you can see that the first worker had an average product of 20 and a marginal product of 20. The second worker had an even higher average product, 22.5. So both of these workers together, their productivity became higher, that second worker added their marginal product was 25. Hang on a second, when you employed the third worker, the average product fell to 21.7, and the marginal product also fell to 20. So we can say that here, diminishing returns has set in after the second worker. So the law of diminishing returns started to apply, or diminishing returns has set in after employing the second worker. Any worker employed beyond the second worker will cause average productivity and marginal productivity to decrease. So, a quick wrap-up. In this video, we introduced total product, marginal product, and average product. So, just a quick wrap-up. If marginal product is greater than zero, that means if it's positive, total product will rise. If marginal product is less than zero, total product will fall. Total product will be maximized when marginal product equals zero. So the maximum point on this total product curve here is when marginal product equals zero. Also, consequently, when marginal product is greater than average product, average product will rise. And this is true in this section of the curve here, where marginal product, the blue curve, is higher than average product, the red curve. Because it's higher, it pulls the average product up with it. When marginal product is lower or less than average product, average product will fall. Maximum average product occurs when marginal product equals average product, which is at this point here, where they intersect. This is the maximum average product.